And we're back with part three. We're gonna be getting into the front end today. Let me show you what I got so far. So far the shop's still a mess. Uh, I'm gonna be making my spindles first off. I got seven of them threaded here. I'm just doing some single point threading in my uh, old 1930s South Bend. Let's do it live on camera. Let's see how this piece came out. Uh-oh, there's a nut over here. So it's pretty good. I mean, once you get into the process of it, it goes pretty well. Let's hope we got a good result here for the camera. Oh yeah, threads right on. Uh, I got this carbide tooling, just a little tiny 516, some little little toy stuff, but man, this carbide tooling really, really brought this thing back to life because it's pretty much clapped. And like I was talking about making things in a you know process format while I already got the, the stuff underway, I made an extra set uh, just in case one bends at the track or something. And also, you know, I might make uh, one with a little bit of different geometry and see how that works out differently. But um, so all I've got is the, the um, these are just going to be the shafts for, you know, where the hubs are going to slide on. Uh, these are five eighths, not three quarter. Uh, I just put some nice fine pitch threads on there. I'm probably going to get the locking shaft collar since USLMRA rules requires either a double knot or like a cotter pin, which I'm not going to do either of those. So I'll probably just get a um, threaded shaft collar, five, five eighths. And um, that way I can use the threaded shaft collar to thread it on, kind of set my preload a little bit on the bearings. They're not tapered, but still, just to keep the hubs nice where they should be. And then, um, and then I'll lock the shaft collar down and that should be it because the shaft collar will satisfy the rule requirements. Um, these are 4140 chromoly steel. Um, so I'm gonna use this and most of the shafting for uh, definitely, well, all the shafting for my spindles is gonna be chromoly and uh, use a little bit of regular, regular cold roll too. But anything that's gonna be real high stress, um, I always pretty much try to use the chromoly. So next up, after I clean up my shop, I'm gonna be working on making a jig setup so I can do all eight of those. Um, and then any future ones I have to do, like I said, I might change the geometry a little bit. So I'll have it where I can hopefully adjust it through a jig. I got some stuff in my mind. So um, that's probably what you'll be seeing next. And this is what we've got so far for the jig uh, that I'm gonna be making the spindles on. This is gonna be, I guess they call this like the barrel piece. Um, so this is what the kingpin is gonna actually be on and I'm gonna probably weld it to the kingpin eventually. This piece here isn't gonna be the kingpin. This is just for uh, just for the jig, this piece of shaft. So where we're at now is uh, I'm gonna weld this piece of five ace chromoly onto this barrel. This is just gonna be totally a, a mock, a mocking purpose only. Um, when I do the final ones, I'll, I'll put a, the grind on that. Um, so as you can see, this is an angle. This is 10 degrees. And that angle is called kingpin inclination. Uh, I'll get into the, the details a little, a little bit more because we've got a few other things. We've got caster, camber, a couple other geometry angles to work out. Um, some of it's educated guess. I'm going by what I've done before and going by what I've, I've read online. Um, but you know, there's no definitive answer. So the reason I'm mocking this up now is what I'm gonna do is go ahead and slide it into a, this wheel. I got a hub in here. And what I wanna do is I wanna find out how short I can cut the spindles. These are the ones that I've threaded and they're gonna be too long. Um, definitely gonna be too long, but that's fine. I cut them long so that I can uh, put them to, to the exact measurement. And what I'm trying to do is I wanna get my lower hind joint as close in here as possible. Um, it's gonna give me the most strength and it's gonna give me the most um, accurate turning of the wheel where the wheel's not moving on such a big arc. It'll be more or less pivoting on the kingpin angle. So the closer I can get it in, the better that will be. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm trying to mock this up. I wanna get it in there as close as possible. Um, so that's where we're at. A lot of math and I'm still gonna kinda just do a, kinda wing it with all the math I've done and, and hope this works. And once I get something that does work, then I'll be able to just plug them out. Um, I'm obviously gonna have to do also the control arms. I'll have to weld those on, but um, this is part of the jig for that that I haven't set up yet. Alrighty, so fast forwarding a little bit, I've got my uh, spindles tacked together. Um, as you can see, I've got the threaded ones here. I've determined my, my length and everything. Um, so this is pretty much where we're gonna sit with the kingpin. It's probably not gonna slide in the wheel as much as I was hoping it would. So my clearance issue um, as to why I can't put the kingpin in the wheel a little bit more is not the heim joints. They're, they're plenty clear. 
Even the one down bottom will be plenty clear. It's actually uh, the steering arms are what's keeping me from, from sliding this kingpin inside the wheel a little bit more. So I'm trying to float everything together here and hold it and do the camera and everything. But the issue is actually making sure I have enough clearance for my steering arms. Um, I'm gonna get into the geometry a little bit here. I won't get too in depth, but let me describe a little bit about what we've got going on here. So when I go ahead and um, weld these steering arms onto the spindles, what I'm going to do is through that jig, I'm going to make it where these are absolutely 90 degrees to the spindle itself. So they're going to be um, entirely parallel with the wheels or with the you know center line of the spindle. Um, and the reason for that is we don't want the inside tire when we're taking a turn to turn less than the outside tire. Ideally, you'd actually want it to turn tighter because of the radius of the turn. Um, and this is called Ackerman. So what I'm gonna be shooting for is a, what they're gonna call a parallel steering setup. So if this wheel is turned 10 degrees, that wheel will be turned 10 degrees. Um, with Ackerman, this one would be turned, I don't know, maybe a degree or two more in to um, you know let the vehicle turn around the corner better um, but we're just going to go for parallel especially on dirt mowers um, these that left front's hardly even going to be on the ground it's going to be bouncing all over and once you start counter steering um, because your back end sliding out then Ackerman's kind of pretty well going out the window at that point anyways so I'm going to be shooting for a parallel steering setup so let me go ahead and show you what I've got going on here. Um, this is my jig. I showed it a little bit. It's pretty well almost done now. I've just got some quarter inch plate here, um, welded up on some feet. And uh, let's see, I got a couple Heim joints just to hold this uh, piece of 5A shaft um, in place. This is just floating now. Um, it's not secured to anything. And I use both sides of it. So this is where I put the, um, the spindle in. Let's see if I've got one. This is where I put my spindle in here to weld it onto the barrel. Um, obviously that's long and I'll, I'll cut it. And then this is my control arm fixture here. Uh, it's bolted in place. Um, so what I've done is I've gone ahead and squared the spindle up with the plate and then used a jacking bolt underneath to hold it in place so that I know now my spindle is entirely uh, square with my steering arm and then if you look down at the end of the steering arm you can see that it has an angle that lines right up with the spindle um, and the reason for that is otherwise with the kingpin inclination that's 10 degrees um, this won't be parallel to the ground or parallel to the uh, center center steering arm i know it's kind of a lot of stuff i'm talking about now you'll see it once it all gets together it'll make more sense and then um, i have an angle here and that's to drop this down about an inch from the center line of the spindle. And what that'll do is, this is gonna be about the center line of my spindle here. So this will be the center line of my control arm. It'll be dropped down about an inch down here. Otherwise it'd be way up here and there's not much I can do up there. So I'll have to notch my frame. It's gonna be more out this way. Uh, and these settings are at the lowest possible ride height, which is four inches. Um, if I'm up four and a half inches, then all these measurements are gonna be down another half an inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and tack this up. I've got my other side. And I'll just have to make some more holes over here for making my left hand spindles. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we'll meet up with you guys after. So this is where we're at. I drilled my other set of holes for the um, control arm fixture holder. Um, put that in place and I tacked up both of my spindles. I actually had a, a little bit of an oversight. Um, these were a little bit too short. Uh, I wanted to go longer. Um, just wasn't giving me enough distance to get my control arm off the sidewall of the tire. I'm sorry, my actually my heim joint off the sidewall of the tire. So um, I ended up going with a little bit longer shafts. Unfortunately, my kingpin isn't gonna be that well tucked in anymore. It's gonna be a little bit more out here. And um, what that's actually gonna do is the further your kingpin is away from the center of your tire, it's actually going to affect how much um, jacking that your chassis has in it. So when you turn to the left, it will affect more dramatically with your kingpin out here, it will affect more dramatically um, how much your tire wants to move up and down. Um, I'll show that better when I have my axle set up, which I haven't even started yet. And that's what I'm gonna get to next. I'm just gonna leave those tacked. I'm not gonna make any more of them until I get my axle set up. And then I'll show you a little more of the geometry at that point. All right, so we're making the front axle now. Uh, I got my quarter inch plate steel, quarter inch by three inch. This is why, this is just regular 
Uh, cold rolled steel, nothing special. I have made uh, end plates in chromoly when I was bending them. Uh, bending them from, you know, abuse on the track. Uh, but this one, I'm only going to have my high joints about uh, five inches apart. So uh, it's these aren't going to be nearly as tall as I've had on other uh, axles where I was running into those issues. Um, potentially I'll do some gussets, but we'll see. I don't think so. I think we're just going to go with some heavy grade 8 washers, and uh, that'll really help reinforce it. Um, but for now, I'm going to actually cut this down from 3 inches to 2.5 inches wide. So I'm just going to get my brand new angle grinder out here and then I'll probably finish up the end on the uh, milling machine just to get it nice and square. So the uh, plates are all made up. I did finish it up to get that exact finish I was looking for in the end so you know unnecessary but I did it. And also you'll notice there's a quarter inch hole in the middle of both of them uh, perfectly centered and then this aluminum I guess you'd call it an arbor. So uh, let me show you what this is all about. I had to turn this thing down from a piece of three inch that's all I had my UPS order got lost, stolen, abducted, something. Supposedly it was dropped off and I never got it. So I had to turn this down from three inch. Let me show you what this is all about. All right, let's take a walk over to the bridge port. Um, I've already got the rotary table just bolted in place, not centered up or anything. So the point of this aluminum piece, which has a quarter 20 tapping in it, is to slide in the center of the rotary table. And then I can take my end plates and bolt them right into there so I know that they are perfectly centered and concentric with the rotary table. Now once I go ahead and get my mill set up wherever it's going to be, I'm just kind of winging it just to give you guys a representation here. Once I get it set up close to where it's going to be, and obviously I'm going to have to uh, clamp this down with more than just that bolt. That's just to center it. It's not going to hold anything in place. Um, I will then be able to cut my slots with the end mill and I'm going to cut slots on both sides so that my spindle will pivot uh, on the center of the end plate to set my caster adjustments. So here's the setup, here's how it's jigged up. I already uh, cut one side out, as you can see, cut the slot. Um, what I did was I plunge cut it um, as much as I could with the end mill. I did about three plunge cuts with the end mill, a five ace end mill. And then I um, moved the bed a couple thousandths each way so that, because uh, you only want one side cutting at once um, when you're using the rotary table, otherwise the thing shakes like crazy. So I moved it a couple thousandths each way, um, you know, spun it back and forth so we got a nice smooth groove that the 5 ace heim joint slides perfectly back and forth. And um, so this should be perfectly radiused to the center. And then I'm going to do another slot on the other side. And that will be it for this end plate. Here's my other one back here. Um, I'm doing these just two for now. I'm not going to go ahead and do all, all sets for both mowers or for all three mowers. I want to make sure I'm 100% right on my spacings and everything. I don't want to do this any more than necessary. So these are these are the trial ones. Hoping they work out good. I've been doing a lot of measuring. And as long as these are good, I'm going to pump out the other ones too. So here's where we're at. We've got uh, one of the plates right here. Uh, I put a little radius on the end just for aesthetics, of course. And I've got one of the spindles uh, mounted to the plate. I got my 5 ace heim joints, some big, uh, some big full size nuts here. I'm actually going to go with um, nylon insert jam nuts, which I have much thinner. Um, so this is what we got. This is where we're at. Um, I've got it set. This is going to be. This is a left front spindle. So I've actually got it set where it will have. Um, as the least amount of caster as possible. And I'm going to go ahead and set these time joints up um, so that they're going to be standing straight up and down. So basically uh, I could get the kingpin to stand straight up and down or I can max out the caster and go all the way back with it. Um, it's a little bit complicated and I'm not doing a great job of describing it, but when this is all done, it'll all come together. So I've got my axle here. It's spaced off of my workbench, four and five eighths of an inch to the bottom. Um, six and five eighths to the top. It's two by inch, two by inch and a half. And um, that's what I figured with this frame. I'll be able to channel it up to that six and five eighths off of the ground, which is going to be two and five eighths off of here. So I'll, uh, I'll end up cutting the groove all the way up here to very close to the top, but it'll bolt it in and it'll secure it. It'll, everything will be good. So what I'm trying to do now is figure out a way to make this plate where I will be able to weld it onto the axle and do it repetitively. I mean, I could do it one off, 
but I'm going to have to do at least three more. Probably I'll make an extra one. So I'm probably going to do about four of these axles. So I'm trying to come up with a way to do this uh, repetitively. This axle is too long, by the way. I just cut it. Um, definitely didn't want to cut it too short. You can always take some more off. So that's just cut long for, uh, for mocking. And then once I get one side figured out, then I can uh, cut my other end to the finish length. So for now, I just need to figure out exactly how I'm going to weld these on in a repetitive um, fashion. And this is what we got on the messy workbench. I uh, made up my little jig. I got some angle iron. I think that's two inch angle iron, 3 16 thick, with just a little bit of eighth inch uh, flat bar on top and uh, one on the bottom as well. It's a little bit bootleg. It's kind of just, you know, together, but it works. It's repetitive and I'm going to be able to use the same ones on both sides. The way this is set up is when I have zero caster, I'm going to have both my top and bottom iron joints directly in the center of the axle. So that way um, I'll be able to use the exact same fixtures on both sides. So I'm gonna weld this on, do the same thing on the other side uh, after I cut it to length, and we'll be getting into it. We're getting there now. And this is what I'm gonna call the rough draft of the front end. A Couple other things to do is I'm gonna have to weld these barrels to the 5 8 shaft here. I don't like that they're not quite as tight as they should be. I haven't decided if I'm going to just use shims here or shaft collars to set my ride height in each corner. Uh, obviously, you gotta weld everything up. It's just tacked right now. Also, um, this center hole here has more of a purpose than just jigging in the rotary table. I'm gonna uh, make some pieces out of this aluminum and that's going to uh, tie both of the heim joints together so they can pivot uh, on the center and that way I'll be able to adjust my caster. I'll probably make a little, a little dash here and try to get, you know, in degree increments, uh, something like that so I can get, a, get some kind of handle on uh, what kind of caster adjustments I'm making. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this video. Uh, next video, we got quite a bit to cover still. Next video, I'll be going over the steering. Uh, I'll be making my, my tie rods. Again, this is gonna be a center steer. So I'll show uh, my center point I'm gonna put in here. I'm going to mount this into the mower. Uh, and I'm gonna, by the end of that video, you'll be seeing this mower on all four tires. So that's pretty much where we're at. And I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of other things we're gonna throw in in the next video. Uh, I'll go over the the geometry a little bit more. I glanced over it, but this video is running long. It's probably going to be a 17 minute plus video. So um, I'm going to save all that for next video and we'll see you guys in part four.